All right, uh, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, which begins with the 144,000. All praises and glory is due to Yahweh, which is the true name of the only begotten Son. Bahasham Yahweh Shai, which is the true name. I'm sorry, I said that backwards. All praises and glory is due to Yahweh, which is the true name of the Heavenly Father, <laughs> not the only begotten Son, the Heavenly Father. Bahasham uh, Yahweh Shai, which is the true name of the only begotten Son. So once more, the true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. And uh, his only begotten son's true name is Yahawashai, which is in the ancient Hebrew, Lashawan Kodash. Okay? Uh, so all praises and glories due to Yahweh Barshem Yahawashai, Barshem Raka Kodash, which is uh, ancient Hebrew for the Holy Spirit. So hope, hopefully, this video will be edifying to you, brothers and you sisters out there of the household of faith. I'm going to call this video, you see the title, uh, Yahweh Shai and his disciples were not pull-up boys. Yahweh Shai and his disciples were not pull-up boys. And actually, I was inspired to put that title by a video I saw by the brother Aisha Yah of GMS North Carolina. I believe, uh, yeah, GMS North, North Carolina. Okay. That's the brother Aisha Yar, which that's a brother I've met, real cool brother, humble brother, you know, in the faith. So he inspired me. Something he said in his video, basically he said, that's what he said. He said, uh, Yahweh Shah and his disciples were not pull-up boys. And this is a response to, uh, you know, if, if you've been watching our videos as of late, you would know that Chief, Chief Ephraim of the... Uh, group that belongs to um, Zabak. I, for, I forgot Z Zabak's title of his group. Um, <clears throat> we haven't talked about Zabak in a while. <laughs> so anyway, um, Chief Ephraim, which is, he's down with Zabak, you know, he called for all the camps to, to make an appearance in Chicago where this group, Watchmen for Israel, was supposedly uh, harassed by the so-called Palestinians during a, a, protest a protest march, which, you know, they, the Watchmen for Israel, they shouldn't have been there in the first place. They should have went, and if that was the day that they normally spoke, they should have went somewhere else and, and, and did their speaking. You know, we were not called in into this thing of ours to be, uh, you know, to be, um, how you say proof? Uh, well, to be, uh, that's the word I'm looking for. We were not calling this thing to be um, antagonizers, right? Or uh, knock around guys or, you know, or bullies, you know, Bible bullies. <laughs> All right essentially carnal men we were not called into this thing to be carnal men we were called in this thing in, in this thing of ours to be spiritual men and to move spiritually and uh if if uh the watchmen for israel if they were applying spiritual principles as directed by the scriptures they wouldn't have been involved in that melee you know they wouldn't have been involved in that protesting garbage Okay, they wouldn't have been there. And you wouldn't have had a reason for Chief Ephraim to try to rally the, rally up the troops and uh which is what he's what he wants to do. He according to his words, he's calling all the camps. And uh I guess this coming Saturday they're gonna make an appearance out there. You know, you know, he's uh saying that uh, he, that uh, they disrespected the watchmen for Israel, so we got to make a, a show of power, an appearance, you know, where they were harassed, those guys from watchmen for Israel. And, uh, 
that thing could easily turn ugly, okay? And this brother made a great point. He said uh, the individuals that harassed them the day they went out there, you know, those individuals ain't going to be there. So essentially, what are you going down there for? You, you know, you're going down there to basically to make a fool out of yourself. And, and that is not the spirit of Yahweh Barsha Shai, not at all. Okay? So I watched a few videos dealing with that subject. If I go to my, uh, the history of my uh, videos, videos that I've watched, uh, not too long ago I watched um, Elder Pastor's video, Perception, Reality. And as predictable as the saying goes, as predictable as a moth is to the flame, we see Vocab Malone, he's right on it. Okay, as a matter of fact, let's play. This is from Elder Pastor's video. Uh, perception, reality. And as you have this guy, Vocab Malone. And like I said, Vocab Malone should have studied to be a drummer because he never misses a beat. He would be an excellent drummer. Uh, you see the caption down here, pro-Hamas mob attacks the Hebrew Israelites in Chicago. Okay, and, and that would be the Watchmen for Israel group during that protest. Okay, so without further ado, let's, let's check it out. Israelites from two different camps, Watchmen for Israel and Anointed House of Saints, somehow ended up in a scuffle with pro-Palestinian protesters in Chicago. Watch. So as you can see, police had to break it up. It's unclear exactly what started this. The reports I've seen have not really given a reason exactly, but watch this. Now in this next part, after the police break it up, you're going to hear the Hebrews lights yelling, Kwam Yasharala, which means Israel rise. You mean, you mean the watchmen for Israel, Israelites? Because not every Israelite group is created the same, Volcat. Just like Elder Pastor said, this guy, when he paints us Hebrew Israelites, he uses a broad brush. He, do, he, he does not, and that's how Esau is going to look at us when the deal goes down. You know, as long as you're calling yourself a Hebrew Israelite, you're enemy number one, you know. Uh, vocab does not differentiate between the different Israelite groups, okay. The specific group that was out there making a fool out of themselves was watchmen for Israel, which shows you there, there are no watchmen, okay. Because if they were the true spiritual watchmen, they wouldn't have been involved in that, in that stupidity, in that poppy show, okay. And now you have this Chief Ephraim character calling all the Israelite groups to, and to equally make fools out of themselves. No, that's okay, uh, uh, Chief Ephraim. Like I said in the video I did, we politely decline your, your uh, offer, your offer of mischief, okay? Because that's exactly what this is, mischief. The scriptures speak about feet that be swift to run to mischief. The thing is, uh, like the brothers have been saying, we have no dog in this fight. We're just... Uh, spectators of prophecy and teachers of prophecy okay that's our job our job is to teach the scriptures to report on the prophecy all right and uh, that's what we mainly concern about okay let's listen some more our job is to report on the situation, the situation between the so-called Arabs, which represents Hamas, and the so-called Jews, which represent the Israelis, and the reason why they're going at each other, all right, and how eventually the Heavenly Father will destroy both those groups out of Israel and cleanse that land and put the real Israelites, the true Israelites, back in that land, and that's all according to Bible prophecy. That's our job, to report on it, not to get involved 
with uh, strife that has nothing to do with us. Okay, there's, there's a scripture, since I said that, okay, it's, it's from the book of Proverbs 26 and 17. Now, I typed that here in Google, as you see here, it says, it's unwise to get involved in someone else's dispute. Right, that dispute is between the so-called Arabs and the so-called Jews. Okay, that's their dispute. Now, even though we have Israelites among both groups, Israelites that are scattered, the majority of them are heathens. And they're fighting each other over our land. Okay? But we already know why that is. We already know that, you know, Yahweh Shai, when he comes back, he's going to remove both of those groups out of our land. The heathen out of our land. That land is going to be cleansed right by fire that land is going to be purified this is according to bible prophecy okay and the true israelites pursuant to isaiah 14 and 1 are going to be brought back to that land that's pursuant to isaiah 14 and 1 so eventually the true israelites of which we are beginning with the, tr the tribe of judah all the way down to the tribe of issachar eventually they're going to be placed back in that land that's according to bible prophecy and that's all we're here to do is report on it, not to get involved with strife that has nothing to do with us. Okay? So, again, it says it's unwise to get involved in someone else's dispute without an important reason to do so. Right. There's no reason why we have to get involved in that strife, knowing that that strife is going to lead to their, both groups, their destruction. Okay, it's gonna it's gonna bring on World War Three. It's in when World War Three happens, that's when that land is gonna be cleansed, the land of Israel. Okay, and then we're gonna Yahweh Shai is gonna bring us back to that land in style. That's Isaiah the 14th chapter, the first verse. The Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. That's prophecy. So eventually we're gonna get that land anyways. So why are you messing with a dispute? with strife that does not belong to you. Only a jackass would make a move like that. And the scriptures speak against that. Let's go to Pro, uh, Proverbs 26 and 17. All right, Proverbs. Bear with me for a minute. Proverbs, the book of Proverbs. 26 and 17. Let's see what that says. It says, uh, it says, He that he that passeth by and meddleth with strife, belonging not to him, is like one that taketh a dog by the ears. Right? Now you try taking a picking up a dog by its ears the dog will bite the shit out of you man well that's what those guys are doing all right uh those guys watchmen for israel that was a dumb move they look like an ignorant mob when they was out there we just saw the clip and they were messing with strife that does not belong to them Strife between the so-called Arabs and the so-called Israelis, so-called Jews. Strife that does not belong to them. They were messing with strife that does not belong to them. They were like one that taketh a dog by its ears. And you, you can test that, that, that um, experiment if, if you like. Go find a random dog and try to pick, pick that dog up by its ears. That dog is going to bite the, the shit out of you. Okay? And here we got this Chief Ephraim character, a.k.a. Cyrus, trying to heap more coals on the fire. Talking about we're going to make a, a, a show of numbers and we're going to raise hell. Okay? Uh, Proverbs 26 and 17 in the NLT. Interfering in someone else's argument is as foolish as yanking a dog's ears. There you go. How you get around that scripture? 
So that's why we say we politely decline your offer, Chief Ephraim. You, you can go ahead and yank on a dog's ears if you want to. And don't be surprised if that dog bite the shit out of you. Okay? And you know what that means. You guys are meddling in strife that don't belong to you. Let's go to Proverbs 29 and 22. Proverbs 29 and 22, which says, it says this. Now, I got this scripture from Apostle Tar's video. It was one of the videos he, he brought, one of the videos, one of the scriptures that he brought out. This is Proverbs 29 and 22. An angry man stirreth up strife. And that's what, that, the example of that was when you watched the Chief Ephraim video. Okay, he's all in his feelings, all in his emotions. He was operating from his emotional side. He was really he was acting like a woman. And further, furthermore, if you're going to do something, you don't announce it to the world. You, 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 you know, there's an old saying, real bad boys move in silence. That's why we think that that was an agent provocateur move, which, which, which you know, when we look at a guy like Chief Reefram, we have to think, if we're going to think at all, we have to think this guy might be an insider. That's something an agent provocateur would do. You know, and all you have to do is look up the term agent provocateur and the scriptures already tell us there's going to be spies. You know, you're going to have your double agents, you're going to have your spies. OK, you're going to have individuals whose belly is, is uh, as a matter of fact. Um, let's let's get that scripture. Uh, let's get that scripture. So I don't butcher it. I know it's in the, yeah, here you go. This is the book of Romans 16 and uh, 17. Now I beseech you, beseech means to beg. This is the Apostle Paul speaking to the Israelites in Rome. Now I beseech you, brethren, mock them, meaning watch them, mock them spiritually, meaning watch them, Mock them which cause divisions and offenses. And that's what this guy Ephraim is bringing. He's bringing an offense into the ministry. The head is the scriptures say that we have to watch how we act so the ministry is not blamed. And he's bringing an offense with his calling of the troops for a stupid reason to mess with strife that has nothing to do with us. He's bringing an offense to the ministry. So you got to watch a guy like that. It says, mock them, meaning watch them. Scopeo. I think the Greek word there is scopeo, which means to watch them, mock them, put the scope on them. All right? Now, I beseech you, brethren, mock them. Remember, the scriptures say we're to walk circumspectly in this ministry. So you got to check everything out. You got to check everybody out. And you got the, the, the person you got to check out the most is yourself. Because I always say, our main enemy in this thing of ours is ourself. You got you to watch that flesh. The Apostle Paul said he kept under his body. At least he himself be, be a castaway. So our main enemy is ourself. That this flesh is always is, is inherently wicked. It always wants to be carnal. And that's where Chief Ephraim was coming. He was coming from his fleshly side, his carnal side. The statements he was making in that video was carnal as hell. It was not spiritual. Talking about pull up. Yeah, yeah, we're the pull up boys. We're going to pull up. You know, and, and if you know anything about uh, Jake slang, you know, you should know pull up means, well, if you look it up, I think if you look it up in the rap dictionary, it means to fight. So he specifically kept saying, we're going to pull up, we're going to pull up. Okay. So his choice of words was very inflammatory. I'm talking about Chief Ephraim in that video that he did. Okay. So it says, mock them. So now I beseech you, brethren, mock them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned. Right. What he was saying is contrary to, because Yahweh Shai, like, like the title says, Yahweh Shai was not a pull-up boy. Yahweh Shai didn't teach us to be carnal. Especially in matters that have nothing to do with us, that does not concern us. Yahweh Shai taught us to be spiritual, spiritual men. Okay. Uh, offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. So we avoid a guy. That's why we politely declined his offer. We avoid a guy like uh, Chief Ephraim. 
He's, he's, not in his, he's not in his right mind. Then it goes on to say, Romans 16 and 18, For they that are such, guys like Chief Ephraim, serve not only him, that leader of the watchmen for Israel, uh, Adam Abbott, Naquam, I believe he goes by the name Naquam. He's another unstable character. And he's another uh, red flag for, for agent provocateur. Was, was he the one who came up with that brilliant idea of sending his camp or allowing his camp to be in, in the heat of a protest with, with two groups that have strife with each other, which has nothing to do with us, except that, they, that their people have in, in, you know, taken over our land, and that's, that was according to Bible prophecy, and that we know what's going to happen in the end, that eventually we're going to get that land back when Yahweh Shai comes, when Yahweh Shai comes. He's the one that's going to set everything, everything right, not us. And certainly not making fools, fools of ourselves, attacking either the, the so-called Israelis or the so-called Palestinians. That's not going to that's not going uh, uh, put us back in the land of Israel, man. Yahweh Shai is the one, according to Bible prophecy, Yahweh Shai is the one that's going to come and gather his elect, beginning with his elect, the elect of the nation of Israel. He's going to literally gather them and bring them back to Israel. That is what the prophecy says. Not you making, uh, uh, few, shouting a few inflammatory words and possibly getting into a fight with, with either the so-called Palestinians or the so-called uh, 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 Israelis. That's just pure stupidity, man. You have no army. Okay? You have no army. All right? <laughs> you just got a few men that claim that they're in the knowledge and the truth, but have no idea what they're involved in. Okay, many of these Israelites, man, that have joined these different groups, many of them have no idea what the hell they're involved in, what the real mission is. And they certainly don't have an idea on, of how to be spiritual. Many of these guys are just carnal men. Okay? Following carnal men. Who's, who's about to lead them to their own destruction. Again, Romans 16 and 18. For they that are such serve not our Lord, Yahweh Shai, see, but their own belly. Yeah, case in point, Chief Ephraim. Okay? And by good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts, the minds of the simple. See? So you have your, your examples. Okay? Let's read that in the NLT, the 18 verse. Such people, Romans 16, 18, such people are not serving Yahweh Shai, our Lord. They are serving their own personal interests. Yeah, there you go. Their own personal interests. Hold up. Their own personal interests by smooth talk and glowing words <laughs> they deceive innocent people, or rather the hearts of the simple, the simple-minded. So those of you that are going to follow Chief Ephraim's call to arms, so to speak, and I guess they're supposed to meet Saturday, you go ahead and go down there and be simple. Whatever happens, happens. Okay? Let's go to Proverbs 14 and 17. Proverbs 14 and 17. And pretty much all what I'm saying, other brothers have been saying it in their videos. There's been plenty of videos on this very subject because it's a hot, hot, a hot button topic right now. You know, uh, Adam Abbott and, uh, you know, a.k.a. Naquam, who's the leader of Watchmen for Israel, the pompous novice, all right, who's lifted up with pride that fell into the condemnation of the devil between him and, and uh, Chief Ephraim, them two, them, you know, th those two uh, shady characters, you know, they have made this thing a hot, a hot button topic, a hot button issue. And, and a lot of GMS brothers have uh, reacted 
done reaction videos to that nonsense, the nonsense of both those individuals, Naquam and Chief Ephraim, okay? Proverbs 14 and 17, let's read. It says, He that is soon angry dealeth foolishly, and a man of wicked devices is hated. I believe that was another scripture uh, Pastor read in his video. So, I direct your attention to the first part of the verse. He that is soon angry dealeth foolishly. There you go. And when you watch that video with Chief Ephraim, there was anger. And, and uh, his response to it was just pure stupidity, foolishness. Okay? Let's go to James 1 and 20. The book of James 1 and 20. James 1 and 20. We'll start at 19. It says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, by the way, this James was Yahweh Shai's biological brother, right? And he says this, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, slow to wrath, okay? And basically, when you watch Chief Ephraim's video, it, it was a call to wrath. Okay? And he wanted to get the other camps involved in. Now, let's say they do go down there. Anything could happen. Fight could break out. Brother could get killed or, or injured, injured badly, sent to the hospital. There could be casualties on both sides. You know, individuals could catch cases. Because emotions are going to be, you know, I'm sure Chief Ephraim going to whip up the emotions of the, those individuals that do show up. Okay? So, basically, that's not the wrath of Yahweh Bashim Yashai. That's the wrath of man. And uh, I guarantee you, if any, any guy gets killed or gets injured badly and he has to go to the hospital, Chief Ephraim ain't going to pay the bill. Okay? A guy gets killed, Chief Ephraim is not, is, he, <laughs> how is he going to compensate the family? Let's say he's a brother who has a wife and, 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 and children. And he's stupid enough to go down there and make a fool out of himself. Let's say he gets killed. Is Chief Ephraim going to take care of that man's wife and, and, and his family? The answer is no. Okay? All, all the responsibility that could come from uh, uh, let's say a horrific outcome from that chief ephraim is not going to burden that responsibility he's not going to take on that responsibility even though he's the one that rallied the troops he's not going to do it okay but you got a lot of israelites that that have, they got their head up their kulu okay they're quick to get carnal they're quick to get angry they got all brawn and no brains James 1 and 20. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of the heavenly father. You hear that? The wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of the heavenly father. And, the, the, and what makes it incredibly stupid is you are messing with strife that has nothing to do with you. Okay? This, this, the age-old strife between the so-called Arabs and the so-called Israelis is just that. That's between them. They are fighting over land that doesn't belong to them. And we already know the outcome, what's going to happen in the end. We already know the future concerning that. Okay? That's strife that belongs between them. We have no business messing with that strife. Okay? If anything, the smartest thing to do is avoid it. Because now, through the brilliant actions of the Watchmen for Israel, now they're going to tie us in, all the Israelite groups, not just Watchmen for Israel, all the Israelite groups, they're going to tie us into being terrorists because we, we either, you know, we're supporting, well, uh, we're supporting the Israelis, we're supporting the, the so-called Jews. That's, that's the narrative out there now. So, so you guys have just handed Esau what he'd been looking for on a platter, a silver platter, which is to demonize the ministry. 
even though the scriptures say the ministry should not be blamed. But you guys, through your stupid actions, and that's how we know some of you have been paid off to, to, to do so, now the whole ministry can be blamed now. Now every Hebrew Israelite can be blamed for the foolishness of some others. Congratulations. But that was to happen anyway. Okay, that's part of being in this, in this thing of ours. The Lord, the Lord brought in all kinds. He brought the good as well as the bad. And that's what the bad individuals brought into this thing of ours. That's, that's, the, that's the kind of stupid shit that they would do and that they are doing to bring blame to the ministry. And eventually, how about Shem Yashai going to deal with them anyway? Okay? They're going to they're gonna get their judgment. So, that was James 1 and 20. Let's go to Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha 8 and 15. Ecclesiasticus 8 and 15. Also known as the book of Sirach. Uh, 8 and 15. Let's see what that says. It says, uh, oh yeah, this is a good scripture. It says, travel not by the way with a bold fellow, lest he become grievous unto thee. Okay, I don't have to explain that. It says, avoid a, a, a person like that. We just read that earlier scripture. It said, avoid a guy like that. For he will do according to his own will. <laughs> and thou shalt perish with him through his folly. There you go. A uh, Chief Ephraim's face should be right next to that scripture. Okay? Let's read that again. That, that, that deserves to be read again. Ecclesiasticus 8 and 15. Travel not by the way with a bold fellow. Lest he become grievous unto thee, for he will do according to his own will, and thou shalt perish with him through his folly. 16 verse, strive not with an angry man, and go not with him into a solitary place, for blood is nothing in his sight. Where there is no help, he will overthrow thee. There you go. So... You know, we are to heed those warnings, okay? Scriptures speak about discerning who serves the Heavenly Father and who doesn't. So any guy that's basically calling you to get involved with some strife that has nothing to do with you and you could possibly end up being killed or at, at the worst case scenario being arrested or being hurt, you got to watch a person like that, okay? That person is leading you to, to, your, to your own destruction. Let's go to Ecclesiasticus 7 and 9. All right, so that's just one chapter back, Ecclesiasticus 7 and 9, which says this. Oh, I'm sorry, Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 7 and 9, not Ecclesiasticus, Ecclesiastes, the book of Ecclesiastes 7 and 9, that's in the Bible, which the Apocrypha is part of the Bible too, uh, Ecclesiastes 7 and 9, it says, Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosom of fools. Yeah, you, you got many a person that's in, in, in jail behind some foolish anger and they reacted emotionally they weren't thinking all right they weren't thinking and then they did the the carnal act and it landed them where in jail and now when they're in jail now they have plenty of time to think that's why they call jail the cooler they bring you there to cool off so now you have plenty of time to think about the stupid shit that you did which landed you there and that's the best case scenario nowadays you do some real stupid, you might it might cost you your life. Hey, like Tommy Sotomayor have that saying, you 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 play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. 
You know, these guys, these Israelite dudes who ought to know better, they're playing a stupid game. So congratulations to them if they win a stupid prize. Okay, we weren't called in into this ministry of ours to, be, to act that way. We were sent as, as it is written, we were sent as sheep among wolves. All right, we're supposed to, the scriptures say, be harmless as a dove, but wise as a serpent. And furthermore, we don't have no power, man. The, the time for getting down and getting rumbling, that's coming through the spiritual power. There's a prophecy where the Lord said he's going to turn the fishes into hunters. And that's when we're going to get busy. Okay? That'll be the time for that. But right now, the time is to remain spiritual and to avoid complications and trouble as much as we can. The scripture clearly says, as much as life within you, live peaceably with all men. What the hell do you think that means? Not to stir up trouble, not to, what? Oh my goodness. You just got some retards brought into this thing about some first class, grade A retards. Cretans, okay? <laughs> Pure, unadulterated Cretans. Look that term up. Jeremiah 16 and 16. This is when we're going to rumble. But it's going to be done spiritually. Jeremiah 16, 16. Behold, I will send for many fishes, saith the Lord. That's what we are. We're fishers. When you go fishing, you don't stir up the waters. All right? You, 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 you set your pole up and you put your pole gently and calmly in the water. All right? Your pole enters gently and calmly in the water if you hope to catch the fish. Okay, we're, we're sent as fishes. Okay, behold, I will send for many fishes, saith the Lord, and they shall fish them. Who, who are we trying to fish? The elect. We're not trying to fish the whole nation either. We're only trying to fish the elect, and the Bible is the bait. This knowledge, this truth is the bait. And you can't force it on the, on the potential member of the elect. You, all you can do is just drop it on them. And, 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 and it's the Heavenly Father that, that puts it in their spirit, whether they, whether they hear or forbear. If they're part of the elect, eventually they'll fall in line. They'll come into the fold. Like you came into the fold. All right? But we don't force no one in, in this knowledge and this truth to, to accept it. It's on them. As it is written, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. It's on them to be fully persuaded. We can't, you can't make a guy become fully persuaded. No matter how persuasive you are, you can't make an individual become fully persuaded. That, that's left up to the individual. And really, it's left up to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. If Yahweh Bashim Yahushai want that individual, they're going to be fully persuaded. Yahweh Bashim Yahushai has a way of fully persuading fully persuading the man to do his will. <laughs> you better believe it. Look at Jonah. Case in point, Jonah. Case closed. Okay? Read the story of Jonah. Jeremiah 16, 16. Behold, I will send for many fishes, saith the Lord, and they shall fish them. And after will I send. Here's the part. And after will I send for many hunters. What do hunters do, people? They destroy. They kill. So the fishes are going to turn into hunters. And that's with spiritual power. Because uh, the book of, uh, well, there's two scriptures. The book of Acts 1 and 8, the Lord said we will receive power after, the, after that the Holy Spirit has come, up, come upon us. That's when we're going to get down. You know, Israel, other Israelites, because they're carnal and they're stupid as hell, they're calling us cowards. Okay, well, we'll be that. I guarantee you this. When, if the Lord gave us spiritual power, you ain't going to see no cowards. Okay, you better pray we're not your nemesis in that day. When, when the, <laughs> let me say that again. You better pray we're not your nemesis in that day when the, when the Yahweh Bashim Yahshai give us spiritual power because we, we don't, you won't have to come looking for us. We're going to come looking for you. Okay? Just like the Terminator. <laughs> All right? But right now, we ain't, we got to be cool because we ain't got no power. The only power we got is the understanding of this knowledge is truth and the ability to teach it. That's it. Walking around like you're a tough guy, like you can't get touched. We got a lot of stupid Israelites, man. I'm telling you, man. Just come plainly out and say it. Jeremiah, and I try, you, look, it, it would be wise for you brothers to try to avoid stupidity in all forms. 
Avoid stupidity in all forms. Let me say that one more time again. Avoid stupidity in all forms. Avoid it. Stay away from it. It will not benefit you. Avoid stupidity in all forms. Jeremiah 16 and 16. Behold, I will send for many fishes, saith the Lord, and they shall fish them. And after will I send for many hunters. So, oh, Acts 1 and 8 and Psalm 110, where it says, In the day of thy power, thy people shall be willing. So that right there, those two scriptures right there, Acts 1 and 8, Psalms 110 and uh, 3, lets you know that eventually the men of the Lord, the prophets, the apostles, the teachers, they're going to get spiritual power. I can't tell you exactly how and exactly what kind of powers they're going to get. I can't tell you that, but I know According to Bible prophecy, eventually the men of the Lord, the true men of the Lord, the elect, will get some kind of spiritual power, just like Moses had spiritual power. Moses, after he was called and did the will of the Heavenly Father, how eventually he got what? He got spiritual power. The Heavenly Father gave him spiritual power in the face of Pharaoh. Okay? So there you go, man. But you got a lot of guys who lack faith. They lack understanding and they lack faith. And they op they're operating from their carnal side. Low vibrational Israelites, man. Brute beasts, like the scriptures speak about in Jude. Brute, the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahshua brought in brute beasts in this thing of ours. With no understanding, no sense, no common sense. Just brute beasts. No different than a, a wild mutt. Okay? <laughs> operating from their emotional carnal fleshly side those guys are not spiritual jeremiah 16 16 once again behold i will send for many fishes saith the lord and they shall fish them and after will i send for many hunters and they shall hunt them from every mountain see and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks so when that time comes you won't have to come looking for us we'll come looking for you that's what it means we'll hunt them okay look at the nlt uh jeremiah 16 16 but now i am sending for many fisher fishermen remember what the what yahweh i told peter i will make you what fishers of men that's us we're the fishers of men what kind of men the, the elect men of 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 this uh of this knowledge this truth like the apostle paul told timothy teach men who shall be able to teach others also that's what the apostle paul that's the mission right now to teach men that are able to teach others also. But the time is coming when those, those same fishers, those teachers, are going to be turned into hunters. But now I am sending for many fishers, fishermen who will, who will catch them, saith the Lord, says the Lord. I am sending for hunters who will hunt them down in the mountains, hills, and caves. Wow. So the Yahweh Shem is going to allow us to get our lick back, so to speak. Everybody, everyone who's ever tormented us, everyone who's ever hurt hurt us, and we we just left them in the hands of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. Yahweh Bashim Yahshai is gonna allow us to get to have fun, man. Okay, but that's with power, so we won't have to worry about retrib retribution. If you take any action right now, uh, you you better worry about retribution. Because you ain't got no power, man. Especially if you take an, an action that was predicated upon your wrath. Knowing that, that the scripture says, The wrath of man will work if not the righteousness of the Heavenly Father. You on your own, Jack. Whatever comes to you, you deserve it. Okay? That's what you get for not following the guidelines. For not following the principles of the scriptures. And, and, and creating your own private war. Okay? That's what you get. Let's go to uh, from there to. Uh, hold up, did I read? Uh, I think I read. Yeah, I did read uh, Ecclesiastes seven and nine. Let's go to Romans twelve and nineteen. I want to get through all these scriptures. Romans twelve and nineteen. What does that say? Hold up, what's going on here? Okay, Romans twelve and nineteen. Let's read that. Oh, yeah, I quoted that earlier. Ah, let me start at 17. Romans 12 and 17. Recompense to no man evil for evil. See? Provide things on... Yeah, so hey, they humiliated us, so we're going to go and... What are you doing, man? 
They humiliated us. It's, it was the, it's time to pull up, pull up. He kept saying pull up. Like he had a pull up demon on him. Chief Ephraim. It's time to pull up, pull up on these guys. You know? You know, if you if you can't, then he said some crazy shit. He said, if you if you get us get a uh, 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 he mentioned the word shooter, which was a poor choice of words. Of course, he was talking in the slang, but it was poor choice of words. You know, if a guy can't shoot, pass it to the, the follow-up shooter or some shit like that. I'm like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? I, that was my initial response. What the fuck is this guy, this moron talking about? Chief of what? <laughs> Freaking joke, man. Pro, uh, Romans 12 and 17. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Provide things honest. There's certain candor we have to have as men of the Lord. There's a certain way we got to behave, man. Not like wild, wild monkeys or wild gorillas that's on the loose with no formal training, with no manners. Okay? A certain way we got to conduct ourselves, man. A certain way we, we're supposed to act. Okay? Especially with people that are more powerful than us. A certain way you got to behave. You know, if you see a, a hornet's nest and you go and just swat it. I hate hornets. And you go and you, you go to the hornet's nest and you just swat it because you hate hornets. Don't be surprised when hornets come out and st sting your ass to death. I hate hornets, so I'm going sw to swat this nest. <laughs> With my bare hands. Because I'm bad like that. <laughs> and them hornets come out and they start dancing on your ass. Sting you right in the eyes, the ears, the mouth. That's what you get for your stupidity, man. Goddamn stupid idi idiot. Romans 12 and 17. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. What the hell do you think that means? Especially you stirring up strife that has nothing to do with you. And Jake is good for that. That's why there's so many Jakes li lying in the grave. Because they got involved with strife that did not belong to them. Because they're that fucking stupid. Many Jakes are in the, in, in the, in the jails or in the, in the graveyards because of that. They didn't believe in thinking before they act. No, they act before they thought. And, and if they were lucky enough, they got arrested sitting doing a bid in jail. That's now the time. Now is the time for them to think. And it's too late then. You should have been thinking before. You know what? I should have never did that. What the fuck's wrong with me? Yeah, you acting just like the woman. And a lot of these guys were raised by the so-called black woman. That psychotic bitch. So they're acting just like her. That's what they learned when they were coming up in the home. That's what they saw. See, the nigga woman can do that shit and get in the, get away with it. Now, lately, she ain't been getting away with it. But for years, she'd stir up strife and, and, and walk right out the back door. Not anymore. She started to collect the retribution for her strife. I'm talking about the nigga woman. Romans 12 and 18. If it be possible as much as life within you or life in you, live peaceably with all men. This is solid good advice. Especially knowing that we're hated. We're already hated, man. By the whole world. Because of, uh, not us, really. They hate Yahweh Shai. So, you gotta watch how you move. You gotta watch what you say. You gotta watch how you move. You gotta watch how you conduct yourself. That's just common sense. When you're around a bee's nest, you don't swat it. Okay? <laughs> Proverbs 12 and 19, Dear, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather, and that's what Chief Ephraim was talking about, vengeance. We're going we gonna to show them. Yeah, you're going to show them, all right. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, say, saith the Lord. See? And, and the beautiful thing about when the Lord repays, he know exactly where to hit a guy. He know exactly where to hit him, where it hurts. Okay? Uh, 
Yeah, I got these two scriptures here, Acts 5 and 40 and Acts 5 and 36. Uh, gives, Acts 5 and 36 gives you the example of Thutis. He was a wild one, and he ended up getting killed for his stupidity. And, and the 400 men that followed him, I think it was 400 men. Matter of fact, let's just go to it. Acts 5 and 36. You got to watch out for them, them wild boys. And then they, then Chief Ephraim said, yeah, the pull-up boys, the pull-up boys. Yeah, that's the, that's the problem. You guys are boys. You're not men. The Lord is looking for men. The Lord ain't looking for no, for no boy. That's the problem with it, with, with it right there. You guys are boys. You're boys. You're not men. The Lord is looking for men, men that act like men, not like little spoiled boys that have been raised by their mamas. That's what you guys are. That's why you call yourself the pull-up boys. It says in, in uh, Isaiah 46 and 8, remember this and show yourselves men. The Apostle Paul said when he became a man, he put away childish things. You guys are acting childish, man. That's why you call yourself pull-up boys. Because you're just that, boys. You're not men. Real men don't act like you. Acts 5 and 36. For before these days rose up Thutis, boasting himself to be somebody. That's what you got. You got your modern-day Thutis in the faith boasting themselves to be somebody when they're nobodies, to whom a number of men, about 400, that's correct, 400, joined themselves who were slain, as, and all as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to naught. And that's going to happen again. You're foolishly following these emotional characters, unstable emotional characters, and some of them are, are double agents, you know, they're actually doing that shit for a paycheck. You're going to follow them clowns and you're going to get just what you deserve for your stupidity. And finally, Ecclesiasticus, we're back to the Apocrypha, Ecclesiasticus 32 and 18. Let's go there. We're going to end this video. Because like I said, man, uh, we had plenty of videos on that subject, which you can check out. Brothers give their, their, their perspectives on the stupidity. says this uh, well let me start the 17th verse a sinful man will not be reproved but findeth an excuse according to his will there you go the 18th verse a man of counsel will be considerate but a strange and proud man is not daunted with fear even when of himself he have done without counsel there you go that says it all right there so on that note, I'll end it there. Hopefully you were edified. On to the next one.